Hi, you are watching Seekers Notes and this is lecture 26 in the series of Indian Constitution. From lecture 24, we are talking about the Supreme Court. We saw about the nature of the Supreme Court, what is uh, what what is the important it, uh, importance it holds in the Indian constitution then we saw the impeachment of judges and how is it done and today we are going to talk about the writs and jurisdiction issued by the Indian Supreme Court right so be, without wasting our time you can see the court issues these seven type of jurisdiction so this is original jurisdiction writ jurisdiction appellate jurisdiction jurisdiction advisory jurisdiction and the court is also known as the court of record and this is also comes in the category of jurisdiction then power of ju judicial review and other powers so we are going to see it one by one so before starting any other type we see original jurisdiction so you see the original jurisdiction of the supreme court that is that means originally only done by the this supreme court for that means original means when you can directly reach to the supreme court and only the to the supreme court originally basically genuinely they are the one who can handle it so when the supreme court decides the dispute between different unit of indian federation we have the federal type of government i told you right so the center and one more state if they have dispute or center or any other state they have dispute so they cannot go to the high court they can only go to the supreme court so it's the dispute of the federal government and that comes under the original ju jurisdiction of the supreme court these federal disputes of the supreme court has exclusive original jurisdiction exclusive or is original jurisdiction means you cannot approach to high court for these disputes these comes only under the supreme courts so th the federal disputes they comes under original jurisdiction of the supreme court that is understood next comes whether of the law or fact that means central government or state government versus right if they have dispute so this is this can be related like law or fact then only it can be handled in supreme court no other way right so 1961st during 1961st the first case of original jurisdiction was bo brought by the west bengal so here state government versus state government or governments can be fighting on a fact right but there are certain limitation on original jurisdiction what can be the limitation interstate water dispute so a court can directly not be reached into this matter that has to be dealt with under the interstate water dispute law of 1956 right so there are original jurisdiction when it comes to water dispute you cannot reach to the supreme court for that you have to form a water tribunal next comes adjustment of certain expenses and pension between the center and state so for expenses also you cannot reach to the court okay next come pre-constitution treaty agreement government covenant engagement Sanat, etc. For that also you cannot reach to the Supreme Court. Next, matter referred to the Finance Commission. So if Finance Commission is looking into some matter, you cannot reach to that point, reach with that matter to the Supreme Court. So you can understand there are certain restrictions when it comes to the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. That remains the interested water dispute, the matter recommended to the Finance Commission, then pre-constitutional treaty and certain expenses. Uh, you know uh, relate uh, re certain expenses which can cause the dispute of between center and state so they reach to the court only in the matter of law right second comes the writ jurisdiction the supreme court is empowered to issue writs including habeas corpus mandamus prohibition q warrant and certiorari for the enforcement of man enforcement of, of the fundamental right of an aggrieved citizen so this is like this is used through constitution uh, constitution heart and soul article 32 where a aggrieved citizen who has uh, who felt humiliated somewhere and his fundamental rights are humiliated he can directly go to the supreme court while in other matter this cannot happen right so writ jurisdiction for fundamental right they are also issued by the supreme court and there can be of following type habeas corpus mandamus prohibition q warranto certiorari okay so habeas corpus mandamus 
prohibition q warantu and certiorari these hold certain importance and i am going to teach you in a while about that okay so a type of original jurisdiction as citizen can directly to the supreme court so writ jurisdiction is a type of original jurisdiction because a court can be reached but this is not an exclusive because when fundamental rights are violated a citizen can also go to the high court so these are original that means you can directly approach to the co supreme court but still they are not exclusive okay so fundamental rights are violated and writ writs are issued by the court and this comes in the writ jurisdiction i told you these are not exclusive because exclusive is said to those writs or those jurisdiction which are only done by the supreme court but this writ matter this is not only handled by the supreme court it is these writs also issued by the high court so high court high court can also writs when uh, can also issue writs when fundamental rights are violated as well as the uh, the high court can issue writs in other matter so here high court holds more importance than the supreme court right so our supreme court has less right when it comes to the writs issue issuing the writs okay so few writs uh, writs jurisdiction are there and there has to be a separate video for that so i'll make another video where, where i will discuss about the habeas corpus mandamus certiorari etc right next comes the appellate jurisdiction that means the word is driven from appeal right so there is a lower court which have citizens and parties involved which are not happy they may not be happy with, with the judgment right then it comes that due to their grievances they, they go to the supreme court and then supreme courts can do following thing they can appeal in the constitutional matter appeal in the civil civil matter appeal in the criminal matter and appeal by the special leave so there can be four type of writ jurisdiction done in supreme court appeals in the constitution ma constitutional matter civil matter criminal matter and special leave so this is understood that in constitutional matter that means related to some matter written in constitution i can go to the backward and appeals in civil matter when a civil case is not uh, you know understood the justice system is not understood by the lower done by the lower court so grievance uh, you know for their grievances parties can approach to the supreme court same happens in criminal matter but what is this special leave so you can understand the special leave believe this segment is very wide very very wide right so appeal in any matter related to judgment passed by any court or tribunal except military court so if interstate border dispute uh, water uh, you know uh, tribunal they delivered some justice and the states they are not happy with that so they can approach to the court by specially okay so related to any matter whether it is civil criminal income tax labor revenue and advocate but military court when they punished about something so they cannot be approached by uh, to the supreme court by specially okay next come advisory jurisdiction so that is like when president asks for opinion of the court so court is binding to the give advice but a president uh, is not uh, bounded he that he he has to understand or he has to apply that advice given by the supreme court but when asked for an advice supreme court has to give an, the advice to the president of india so you can understand it like this that the president when he asks for advice by the chief justice of india then chief justice of india has obligation to give advice to provide advice to the president but president has no foundation that he has to follow the advice of the chief justice of india then uh, the supreme court is called as the court of record that means every statement every judgment every decision taken by the supreme court is, is re it is recorded so legal precedents are there and legal references are made by the justice delivered by the court so that's why this is called as the court of record and once supreme court delivers the justice their justice cannot be questioned okay so the contempt of court that means not obeying the court i mentioned it earlier in case of Sup that Su supreme court of india can punish itself high courts and subordinate court so that means the court contempt of court is applicable to the high courts as well as the subordinate co courts as a punishment for disobeying and that consists six months of jail and an, and a monetary penalty described in the constitution so 
नेक्स्ट कम्स द पावर ऑफ जुडिशियल रिव्यू सो गवर्नमेंट हैज थ्री ऑर्गन एग्जीक्यूटिव लेजिस्लेटिव एंड जुडिशरी राइट सो द कोर्ट हैज दिस स्पेशल पावर वेयर इट कैन सी द एग्जीक्यूटिव एंड लेजिस्लेटिव राइट इफ दे टुक सम डिसीजन सो द कोर्ट हैज पावर ऑफ जुडिशियल रिव्यू दे कैन नॉट चेंज बट एनी डिसीजन टेकन बाय द एग्जीक्यूटिव गवर्नमेंट और लेजिस्लेटिव द कोर्ट कैन रिव्यू दैम एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड एज द पावर ऑफ जुडिशियल रिव्यू सो इट कैन द लॉ मेड बाय द एग्जीक्यूटिव एंड लेजिस्लेटिव दैट कैन बी डिक्लेयर्ड एज इलीगल अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल एंड इनवॉलिड बाय द इनवैलिड बाय द सुप्रीम कोर्ट कॉन्सिक्वेंटली दे कैन नॉट बी एनफोर्स बाय द गवर्नमेंट एज वेल सो आई होप यू लाइक द वीडियो and you understood everything about the supreme court thank you for watching secrets note have a good day bye bye